Hello, welcome to the third in our uh, series of videos on river origin for GCSE uh, geography. Uh, today, with this video, we're going to look a little bit more about the processes that uh, a river has. Um, one of our previous videos obviously looked at the role of erosion and, and uh, how erosion affects the river channel. Uh, this is going to focus on transportation and go on to look a little bit about deposition, but it's going to look at transportation, deposition and erosion uh, and how landforms are created, so how specific river landforms are created. Um, so, um, how does, river move, how does the river move material? Uh, through the process of transportation. And there are four which you should aware of, uh, should be aware of. So if you get a question asking you about, explain two ways that the river transports material, then you should know that there is traction. Okay? Uh, traction is where stones are rolled along the riverbed. Okay? So that's how the river moves the heaviest stones that are in the river channel. Okay? It rolls them along. But of course the river needs the most energy to do that. So you often don't see that taking place until you are in the lower course of the river where you've got you know, greater volume of water, more energy. So traction is one way that a river can move material. Another way is something called saltation, uh, which is where sand-sized particles, much smaller particles, are bounced along the bed uh, in a leapfrog fashion, okay? So they're almost doing that motion as they go along. Uh, suspension is where even smaller particles, usually salt, uh, uh, silt and clay sized particles, are carried within the river flow. So you could almost see them, you know, if you put your hand in, you might catch some very small particles being carried within the water. And then finally, uh, something called solution. Uh, we wouldn't be able to see it with the naked eye because these are, this is material which has dissolved in the water, so basically we can, you know, can barely see it, but there is still material being transported. So four key methods of transportation. Traction for your largest uh, types, uh, your, your largest boulders, I should say, your largest material. Saltation, bouncing them along the uh, river bed. Suspension, carrying them in the water, and then solution that actually dissolved in the water. Quickly going back to points from a previous video about changes between the upper course and lower course. A couple of diagrams here that you might be able to see, okay, demonstrating uh, again that a river increases in width. In our diagram, we've gone from five meters to fifty meters. Um, the size of material gone for angular boulders there on the riverbed. You might not be able to see that because of the light. Uh, small rounded pebbles on our right hand diagram. So the size of our bed load decreases. Also, the actual appearance of the banks, something that we didn't mention, our banks are eroded um, from, so they go from being uneven and quite a, a, an angular profile to being much smoother, uh, much more sort of profound as you move downstream. Okay? So just a little bit more about how a river changes from its source to its mouth. So, if I just move over to the other side, okay, uh, the first of three features that it's worth knowing. Uh, and how they form. The first is a V-shaped valley. Hopefully you can see that there. All right, those uh, valleys where you've got the river running through and you've got that sort of sloping profile of the valley sides on each side, okay? Um, so how is it formed? We start off with something with vertical erosion, okay? And vertical erosion is the river eroding its river bed, okay? So it's not doing its banks yet, it's eroding its river bed. And what happens is, that's known as vertical erosion, and so, over time, our riverbed deepens and that actually makes the sides steeper. So our riverbed is going down, but it's leaving sort of higher, uh, higher sides, if you will. Okay? Um, then what happens is, um, over time, weathering and gravity wear away the steep valley sides, forcing material into the stream, which it uses to cut the valley deeper. So basically, once you have established your river valley, once the river has started eroding downwards, and uh, it's created steeper sides, uh, they actually get attacked by weathering. That material then falls into the river, allowing the river to erode further downwards. Okay, um, and so we've got there. The small stream flows down. You'll see that the bed load will scrape downwards and scrape away the bottom of the channel. That's basically vertical erosion. So that's what's happening to start with. Um, our river erodes downwards. Our valley sides are left exposed. They're weathered away. Material falls in, and that material then scrapes along the bed further, causing the river to go through the same process again. So your river is constantly eroding downwards, your valley sides are constantly being exposed, so material gets weathered away. Okay? So that would be a V-shaped valley. Another popular feature that you can talk about is a waterfall. Okay? Uh, key points of a waterfall then uh, are 
created where you've got two different types of rock in the river and your water flows over um, a sort of step of hard rock onto soft rock and then starts to erode downwards. Okay? Um, so what we end up with, we end up with uh, soft rock being eroded faster, we get the creation of a plunge pool. Uh, and the energy in that plunge pool and the material in that plunge pool cause our soft rock to erode backwards here, okay? A process known as undercutting. So if you get a question about, describe and explain how uh, natural processes create a river landform, you can talk about waterfall, you can talk about erosion, you can talk about undercutting. So undercutting, uh, undercutting occurs, our soft rock is eroded away, uh, quicker than our hard rock, we get left with this hard rock overhang up here that you can see in orange and that eventually becomes uh, unstable because obviously it's got no support beneath it, the soft rock has been worn away and that then collapses into the plunge pool. That does two things, uh, first of all uh, it means that you've got material in there and then because you've got material in there that now starts to scrape against the soft rock again and so the process begins again. Okay, So you've got a constant situation where water flows over, energy from the plunge pool erodes the soft rock, leaves the hard rock overhang, that collapses because it doesn't have any support, that adds material to the plunge pool, the whole process then begins again. And as our waterfall moves back through the landscape, it creates a gorge, okay? And that's how our river landform changes over time. Final one is a meander. A meander created where the river flow is sort of moving, sort of flows from side to side, okay? Doesn't sort of go straight down, flows from side to side. And because it's going like that, Okay, where it's hitting the sort of outside, you know, where it's sort of hitting the, the, the river bank, okay, as it goes in that motion, it actually starts to wear that river bank away, okay, and so you start to get something like what we've got here, quite a profound uh, river bend, okay, and the outside of the bend is where erosion takes place, because not only is the bank being eroded, but actually the bed is being eroded, because of how the water is shifting from side to side, so we end up with deeper water, where we've got deeper water we've got a greater volume of water, where we've got a greater volume of water we've got more energy, okay? So the river has the energy to carry material and then it uses that material to scrape away the bed and scrape away the river banks, okay? You often get uh, what's known as a river cliff on the outside of the bend. Meanwhile, on the inside of the bend, because you've now got a profound situation where your water is flowing from side to side, it's going in that motion, you've got this point where actually water isn't flowing, or it's flowing very slowly, it would seem, almost on the inside of the bend. So where you've got much shallower water, uh, where you've got um, like le a, a smaller volume of water, you've got less uh, energy, and therefore rather than being able to carry material and use it to scrape away the banks, as you can see here, what we end up with is a situation where material is deposited. Okay, so how does the landform change over time? How does our meander change over time? Because our, bow, our, our bend, sorry, gets more profound. It right? starts off like that, and then maybe ends up like that. Okay, over time, of course, we end up with an oxbow lake. So three main landforms that you can look at. You can look at Bishek valleys. Uh, you can use the review seats and the PowerPoint to look back over those. You can look at um, waterfalls. That's always a very popular one because everyone understands how waterfalls are created. Um, but if it's about the lower course, so it's been a bit stingy and it's asking you for a river feature in the lower course and how it changes over time, then Meander is your one to go for. Okay? Lovely.